Now what I did notice in that video was I have actually made another mistake. Just goes to show you how it's getting late and I'm not really prepared and losing it a little bit. Okay, so we had a mistake I made here where we want to check a position in relation to our target. Now let's look at what modifier we're adding to that target. We've gone back and there's the same mistake I've made twice. So let's just check that happening. Here's our player, so again I'm going to leave him. Let's get a bird's eye view. I'm going to leave him right in the center of the screen. So there's our NPC. Now, if that's our player right, like I said, he should be teleporting there. Let's just even give him a zero so it's all even Stevens. So, our player's forward there. Here's our player right. Like I said, if I did our target, which is our player, a target, plus our target right, we should always appear here when we're teleporting. And because I've used a transform right, I'm adding some kind of random vector based on our direction here. If I hit play, instead of expecting to be there, see look, he didn't appear where my arrow, my cursor was. He appeared somewhere different. And he wasn't in view, so he kept running. Let's try that again. See, he's teleporting according to his right in relation to the player. Now that's pretty good. Uh, what if the player was indeed facing that way? Let's run that again. So again, our right, this is where I did want it. See, he's teleported in front. Now there's a bit of a chance that the player could actually see that happen. Now it's up to you if you want to change that out, but this is what you call a happy accident. <laughs> okay, I made a mistake, but it's actually randomized the position in relation to the target, depending on the rotation of the NPC. So that does work, that's not too bad at all. But if we cross reference to what I did in the old script, there we have it. We're finding our terrain position, and it is the target position plus the target's right. Let's leave that, let's just go back to there. So, if we put it in, if we put it in what I was going to make it. Let's just see if that's brought in what I expected the behavior to be. So now he should be teleporting somewhere right here. There we go. Right underneath it. He's right there. He's coming because he's not visible. He's going to come real close. Okay, so let's just even run that again. Player. And he's come to the right of the player. Okay, that's the actual intention of what I was trying to do. Hmm. So, let's just move that NPC around and just prove every time we teleport, we're always going to teleport to that one position on the right every single time. So that, that, that is quite boring and quite predictable. So that's why I mentioned this. And this is a happy accident. Okay? So you could actually employ that. If you feel that, that the player is not going to see this guy up here, or the other option you have, it's just to increase this maximum range. Even if we put it up to 15, then we're saying, we set our maximum range. We said, yeah, the player will definitely not see the enemy at this range. And then we add a little bit more. You could quite happily increase that range and leave that there. And that's going to randomize things quite a lot. But let's just show what I did do previously. Now, before we found this right, I added a multiplier to our right. Now, as you saw, if you add a negative to a vector, you can spin it around in the opposite direction. So, rand. So we're going to make a random direction 
And this is just, oh yeah, we better make it a float. Because we want to multiply it. Does it have to be a float if we multiply it by a vector? Teleport distance is a float. Yeah, let's just make it a float. Um, no, 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 no. I should really stop and do this tomorrow. But I want to finish this. So it's going to happen. Warts and all. Okay, this is going to be an integer variable. And it is going to equal random range. Now, when you're dealing with randoms and integers, the maximum value is exclusive. So let's just even confirm that in the docs. And the scripting reference, and let's just go back to random. We're looking at a random range. We have two parameters here. We have for floats, and we have integers. Now, here's the important part to be aware of. Returns a random float pointing number between a minimum inclusive and a maximum inclusive. So if I said 2.0, 1.5, it is possible this random would return a 2.0, and it is possible that it will return 2.5. Now, if we're working with integers, the minimum is inclusive, the maximum is exclusive, which means it doesn't get included. So as you just saw in my type up I just did then, if I make this 0, and I make this 2. 2 is exclusive. So this will absolutely never return 2. So between 0 and 2, this is going to return either a 0 or a 1. So we're dealing with the integers. Okay? So that explains that. So from this random, we've got a value of 0 or 1. Now we don't want to multiply out by 0, because that's just going to 0 that whole lot out. We want a negative or a positive, because we're doing the same thing as here. So just ask if if our n has returned a zero, let's just make it minus one. So after this happens, and after the conditional check, our random value is going to be one or minus one. So we have our multiplier here on our vector. So simply, let's just mix it up here. A random do multiplied by. So if this was 1 times our right, it would be our right. If it was minus 1 times our right, it would be our left. And that's how I did it originally. Let's just cross check that there. So this is making sense again. Okay, I've written it out a bit different. I started off with a hard coded value, then I did a random and incremented it. So I've done it the opposite way around, and then I've multiplied our vector by that. That's why I've just done it a little bit shorter. I've just given it a random at the start, and then said, yep, you get it. So let's see that in action. So now, by the original standards, he's either going to teleport here, or he's going to teleport here. And I did that because it's close to our view. So as our player turns left or right, there is a good chance that he's not going to be far off, especially he teleports and starts walking toward. There's a good chance that you could turn, well, there's a 50 50 chance that you could turn into him. So he's going to teleport here or here. Let's run that and see if I fix that. So he's teleported to that side. Let's just drag him out. He's teleported to that side again. There we go. Our random's in action. So he's gone to the opposite side this time. That didn't take him long at all. Like the right a little bit more so far. And the right again. And the right again. This is just random for you. And the right again. And the left. Okay. So there's our random left or right.